Ready to get into it on today's Philadelphia 76ers now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr. Could the Sixers trade for Pascal Siakam? According to a Canada Sports Network that covers the Toronto Raptors, Siakam could be moved at some point prior to the start of the regular season or even earlier. And how about this? Glenn Rivers helped bring Patrick Beverly to Philadelphia even though Glenn got fired by the Sixers. Does it sound weird that I said Glenn Rivers? New rule here on the show. I cannot say Doc Rivers any longer, and I won't. Why? He's a playoff choke artist, and there's only one Doc in the history of the Sixers organization that I want to remember, and that's Dr. J, Julius Irving. Let's begin here with Pascal Siakam. Sportsnet in Toronto saying there's a lot of speculation from one of the Raptors beat guys that Pascal Siakam could be dealt soon. And could he then reunite with his former head coach in Nick Nurse, who really streamlined his development alongside Masai Ujiri, one of the best basketball executives in the sport. So Sportsnet on Siakam here. There is persistent speculation that Pascal Siakam, the team's leading scorer, second most prolific playmaker, and ultimate homegrown success story, could be traded before the regular season starts and perhaps much sooner as the NBA's transaction market simmers. Now, the strengths of Siakam's game, pretty interesting story for him. Masai Ujiri went to Cameroon, discovered him. Then he went to New Mexico State and ends up putting up some really good numbers there. And then Masai Ujiri is like, this guy can really play. They take a chance on him, and what a developmental story he's been. Him and Joel Embiid, by the way, both from Cameroon, representing that country. And the strengths of Siakam switchable and pesky defender. The Sixers know firsthand in some of those playoff matchups against Toronto that when Pascal Siakam defends them, he is so long and switchable and athletic that he's really difficult to get by. That long athleticism, I think, helps him be a pest against some of the top wings in the NBA, but he can guard some guards, but he can also hold his weight against some other bigs as well. That familiarity with Nick Nurse, I think, is important here if the Sixers were to show some interest, just because Nick Nurse is familiar with them, knows how to use them on both ends of the floor, it's kind of a chess piece on defense and on offense. Impressive developmental story. What this tells me, he has a level of dedication to the game of basketball where he started off as such a raw prospect. And look at him in college. Look at him during his upbringing. Like, he looked like a baby gazelle trying to play the game of basketball. And then over time... He's been able to stay in the lab, improve upon his craft. He's basically the antithesis to Ben Simmons, who was content with being good, never wanted to tap into his greatness. He had greatness potential, but he was like, you know what, I got the bag, made an all-NBA team, all-NBA defense, I'm cool with that. Siakam, on the other hand, is like, I want to get better. And how about the growth that we've seen here? from the start of his NBA career up until this point. And then these numbers, obviously, his last four years. And last year, year before that, year before that, the three-point numbers have suffered a little bit. But in 2019-2020, almost 36% from three, 23 points per game, seven rebounds, 45% from the field. Is there any way that Pascal Siakam can get back to that level of offensive production? Because he's going to be able to score the rock. More than 20 points per game in each of the last four seasons. Pretty solid rebounder just because he's so active. And even though he struggled to find twine from distance, his field goal percentage overall has been pretty good. 45.3, 45.5, 49.4, and 48% over the last four years. I think that this is a pretty intriguing trade target here for Philadelphia. Now, there was some chatter about him telling the Toronto Raptors that if they were to trade him, he would not sign a contract extension with the acquiring team because he wants to stay with the organization that identified him, took a chance on him, and helped develop him throughout his career. But could teaming back up with Nick Nurse maybe change that to a certain degree? And could you trade an expiring contract for Tobias Harris for an expiring contract of Pascal Siakam? Now, if a move does happen, you know we're going to cover it here on Philadelphia 76ers. Now, our coverage, really since the Sixers got bounced in the playoffs by the Boston Celtics, I believe has been fantastic. You see the link down below, even easier, just hit that subscribe button. And if you had to pick one for the iteration of the Sixers 2023-2024 team, which player 
would you rather have here? Is it Toby or is it Pascal Siakam? You let me know. As for Toby, how his numbers compare to Siakam's. Points production, not the same, but the fit of Siakam would certainly be interesting here. I think you could get away with playing him at the four. P.J. Tucker would be relegated, I guess, to a bench role. And then what do you do with that wing spot? I guess he could play the wing as well if you want P.J. Tucker there. The lineup would certainly get interesting. I wonder if Siakam's fit would be better than Harris and if Harris would be more comfortable with another team just because with Doc Rivers as the coach, like he would stand idly in that corner. And I think that Toby is better when he has the ability to create and get downhill. Like at 6'9", he's a pretty good playmaker. He doesn't have a great handle, but it's good enough. And that mid-range touch is pretty solid. The last time, too, that Harris was on an expiring deal, it was when the Sixers traded for him. When he was playing with the Los Angeles Clippers, his numbers that year were awesome. And that's probably why Elton Brand at the time had made that trade. He was averaging more than 20 points per game, 50% from the field, and like 43 44% from three-point range. Can him being on an expiring deal spark this level of him being an assassin? Can Nick Nurse maximize Toby as a player? What Jane Springer said the other day about his first practice with Nick Nurse, he said, look, Nurse was pointing out all these tendencies and telling us all of these intricacies to the game, all this fundamental stuff that I haven't heard of since I entered the NBA. That is kind of an indirect shot, not intentional, at Glenn Rivers. So I'm hoping that Nick Nurse, who's a better coach than Glenn Rivers, will be able to help some of these players develop. It's tough to say Glenn Rivers and not Doc. Make sure you subscribe to the show. Join the 76ers Now movement here at Chat Sports. We appreciate your support. It wouldn't be possible without all of you. And the more subscribers that we get, more videos that you get right here on the channel. How about this? Glenn Rivers helped recruit Patrick Beverly to Philadelphia even after he got canned by Daryl Morey. Pat Bev said on his podcast that partners with Barstool Sports with Roan that choke artist Glenn Rivers convinced him to come to Philadelphia. And Beverly said this was the quote verbatim from Rivers. I love Philadelphia, Glenn had said. The Sixers need you. You will be great with Joel Embiid as well as James Harden. If I had you last year, we would have been a different team. Would they have been a different team? They could have used some defensive tenacity coming in off the bench. Him playing alongside P.J. Tucker I think is going to be hilarious just because of the antics that both of them bring to the floor. The NBA is going to outlaw the flopping rule, so that does affect Beverly and P.J. Tucker a little bit. Beverly will be a great value signing if he can get back to the three-point numbers from 2020-2021 because the last two years there's been a little bit of a dip with his stroke. 33.5% this past season, 34 before that, but the two previous years, almost 39% in 2019-20, and then 2020-2021, almost 40%. And this is a guy who you know is going to pick up cats from 94 feet. He's going to get in your face. He's so Philadelphia that it hurts. Roar, 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 roar. Bulldog all the way, just like P.J. Tucker. But in order for him to be playable, he has to be able to knock down some of those three-point shots. I caught Coop off guard. He might have sprinkled down his leg with that dog rough right there. Do you like the Beverly signing? Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. And I see some people laughing that we're calling Doc Rivers, Glenn Rivers here on the show. It's just my new rule here on 76ers. Now, we good on time? Cool. Subscribe to the show. Get those comments in. We appreciate it. We want to hear from all of you.